All right, we are live, live, live back with another Gramps Live Two Brothers Fishing Podcast. I'm not going to read the whole intro tonight because, man, we're already late enough as it is. My mic wanted to force an update and keep hitting me with it over and over and over again. And, of course, I haven't streamed since. I think we went to Redcrest. So, anywho, <laughs> joined tonight, Jeremy and I are joined by the recently crowned previous Bassmaster Kayak Series Ooh. Angler of the Year. And, yep. of course, that's a coveted title. I but can't then he point. had to turn around <laughs> and add another <laughs> one to go with it <laughs> mr <laughs> drew gregory brother what is up man oh not much man yeah i've been very very blessed and fortunate to be holding this thing right here man i tell you what it's it's been a crazy you know couple weeks after uh that event here so let's see if i can get it back where it was uh but not complaining man i busy 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 but that's uh that's you know what happens when you win and you got to be willing to you know, tackle all the podcasts, all the interviews and all that stuff. And, and then hopefully uh, just share the love and passion of the sport with others and, and represent Bassmaster well and, and just kayak fishing well. And hopefully I can do that to the best of my ability. So thanks for having me, guys. And, and the great thing is, I mean, you you don't limit yourself to, you know, one series. or You fish all of the things. I mean, you have been heavily involved in the sport for, mm. you know, you're one of the one of the pioneers. I mean, you still look like a young guy because, you know, <laughs> most of you guys are compared to us old parts. But and, still, I shave, and I shave, so that helps. It, <laughs> <laughs> that helps, too. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's really cool to have a guy who's so versatile, who can literally take a, a yak, a paddle, and a PFD and yeah. a pole and just go hit the water somewhere and, and smash fish. And that's really cool. You know, in the day and age we talked and everybody's hyping up. I mean, I'm in, I'm in the middle of like my most advanced kayak rigging ordeal that I've, that I've ever done just to take, you know, my playing on the water to a different level level, but still have paddle kayaks too, but yeah. it's cool in today's day, modern technology and things like that too that a, a guy like you is too very still very traditional like you know fisherman mm -hmm. can yeah. just can, can go out and put the smack down and and bring home a championship so let's i we i, I know we want to talk about some fun stuff you got coming up too we'll get to that yeah. in a little bit but whatever you guys want to talk about let's uh, let's bounce back a little bit and take us back a few weeks to um to yep. tank killer and and tell us about the adventure out there because mm -hmm. i mean a lot of people don't realize it's like you know you've got three different series that have been around for a few years now with kbf the hobie bos right. and uh you know bass master under the great leadership now of mr steve-o taking that you know putting mm -hmm. putting bass master on the level with kayak fishing that it should be yeah and the fact that they brought the kayak anglers in the same time period location area as the Bassmaster Classic. You have the best of the best of the best in the kayaks and the boats in the same area at the same time period. And uh man, that that that's just awesome. And and you know, who would have thought we as a sport if kayak bass fishing um over the years, this is the, the pinnacles would keep growing like they are. You know, you've still got, you know, Team USA is getting ready to go down and compete for Murray to to represent the U.S. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it's what a time to be alive. I mean, yeah, with all cool. of the with all of the stuff going on in the world, we as anglers can complain about forward facing and all the goofy stuff. <laughs> yeah. When, when realistically, there's a lot of crap going on in the world. How blessed are we to be able to get on the water, put all that nonsense aside, yeah. and just go catch some fish? Yeah, I mean that's, that's true. It's that's it, it. it's 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 what a lot of us do it for. A lot of us like fishing the derbs for fun and competition. You know, fellowship with our 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 favorite people. You know, it's I always look at each one of these big tournaments as like a family reunion. I tell people I'm not going to go win these things. You know, sure, I could have the best day of my life and get super lucky and smash them for three days in a row. Mm -hmm. But still, the fact that we get to go hang out with the greatest people in the country. Exactly. And, and, and that's, celebrate, yeah. that's something to be said. And well, let me talk about 10 killer because I know that's what you're getting at. Oh, yeah. And I'll show you some videos or pictures if you want. But to your point. 
and this we'll get to this later in the show, I know, but to your point, what's really cool about that kayak adventure series is what you're saying now. You get to go out and you spend time with all these the anglers and the fellowship is what is really more that's what you can guarantee at any event. You know what I mean? You're gonna be there with the your closest friends and the family. You can never guarantee that the big fish are gonna buy it, that you're gonna win, all that because the realistically it only happens for one person. So obviously, yeah. but what we can guarantee, and that's where the kayak adventure series is kind of we stepped in and we said, you know what? We want to make sure that the priority definitely becomes about that fellowship and the family and the fun because you can't guarantee the other stuff. So we want to make sure this is fun. And that's why we have that, the format, you know, Thursday opening ceremonies, we get to party the night away Friday, you know, some seminars in the morning and afternoon uh, session of fishing for the tournament so that the tournament ends on Saturday. So we can party the night away and have fun and fellowship again on Saturday because you don't got to get home the next day. It's not Monday the next day. So it's all built in around this concept you're talking about of this fellowship and family and just friendships and memories, because that's really what matters in the end. This stuff right here, it's what does that really matter in the end? It doesn't. Yeah. What matters is us here hanging out and the friendships and the fun that I have and the memories with all the guys at the Airbnb and the houses. That's that's where it's at. And hopefully we'll have a little bit more of that kind of vibe and nothing wrong with those the other trails of course the the more i would call them the elite level trails yeah. that that are kind of like that i love to fish clearly i mean i i enjoy that too it's more of a challenge it's not the same kind of like relaxed fellowship enjoyment that i think the kayak adventure series will feel like it's more of the you're challenging yourself against the best that kind of like enjoyment mm -hmm. you know and, and 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 fun and challenge that's it's just different it's like the elite series Bassmaster, it's their job, you know. Yeah, they they have some guys they stay with and have a good time, but they're focused. They're getting to bed early. They're not uh, PGA Tour players are not partying till one and two a.m. when they got a tea time at seven a.m. It, once it John becomes Daly style. yeah, John Daly style, yeah. Someone else said that when I use that analogy, but the the point is, you can have uh, you know, you can't really have both. You know what I mean? It's yeah. either once it becomes something that people do for a living, which it kind of is in kayak world. You know, a lot of younger guys folks that maybe, you know, don't have the, the family yet and all that. And, you know, they're like, okay, I can kind of like chase this dream right now and, and potentially make a living off that. Well, once it becomes serious, it's, it's, it's serious. And they, you know, it's getting to bed early. It's working hard. It's rigging nonstop. And, and, you know, with our format, hopefully we can kind of touch on this more of that boondoggle hangout camp out, but at the same time, yeah, someone's going to walk away with it, you know, a lot of money too. So it's not like oh, it's yeah. nothing. It's not like it's nothing. But anyway, 10 killer was great. I'll pull up uh, some pictures and videos. Do you guys want to, how do you want me to do this, man? Do you want to tell, tell like this, just the whole little quick story rundown just, of the, just, the yeah, do or? what you do. Jeremy may pop in and out. He just yeah. moved to a new place and he doesn't have, uh, he doesn't have internet at home yet. So he's been using his phone and been successful, but he may pop in and out. Just depends. Or yeah. he may just hop in the chat and watch. That's all good, man. Um, I know I, I can, I got the gift of gab a little bit, so no. sorry, Jeremy, I can uh, talk with, between you and, and me. I think we'll be uh, all right, man. So Jeremy, what's up? Yeah, there he is. He, he says his service yeah. is spotty. So, but yeah, so man, it was just, you know, I did what I love to do and like what you alluded to. I still, I don't use any like, like fish finders and stuff like that. I've got a torpedo motor and it's kind of like imperative to have some sort of motor these days, you know, and, and uh, you know, the Hobie KBF Bassmaster sort of realm, you know, mm -hmm. um, you kind of have to have the motor these days. So I did get that. And basically what I did is I just went to an area of the lake that I knew suited my strengths, which was honestly just that river. I mean, I, I mean, I can catch fish on the lake. Don't get me wrong, but and I won uh Bassmaster grand Lake right here in the middle, uh, fish in the main lake. And so I can do it. And I found fish in a spawning pocket there, but I just don't enjoy it. You know, I got into, I mean, kayak fishing for, you know, exploring wild places, rivers and creeks and wild water. So, I mean, when I go fish tournaments, I'm still going to try to fish the way that I enjoy fishing, which is yeah. those backwaters and wild places that only the kayak can get to. So I just knew I was going to fish that river. I knew the river had big fish in it. I knew the lake had big fish in it too. So, you know, but I knew the river did. I just didn't know that the largemouth got that big in that river. I knew it had big smallmouth. Uh, it always been on my bucket list. So, you know, first day I just went to that northernmost ramp that we were, were allowed to launch at and uh, just drove uh, down a dirt road. It got as far upstream as I could away from the actual ramp. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, on the dirt road where people kind of access from the bank and it got me further upstream and I knew I was just going to motor up for, you know, two, three miles and start fishing then because I figured all the other pre-fishing 
that whole first two, three miles was going to get pounded. You know what I mean? Every yeah. day by all the anglers. So I was like, I don't even care if there's fish there because they're not going to matter in the tournament. Cause if a bunch of people they're fishing the two, three miles, it's going to all get cannibalized or it's all going to get beat up in practice too much to where it couldn't hold up for two days anyway. So I started further up and then found fish there, caught like 91 and a half inches in four hours. And then I, uh, had the, the rest of the whole event was, you know, me and I'll, I'll pull this up. Um, I will share a video file with you. So when you see it, you can, you can pull it up. But the rest of that, um, that rest of the whole pre-fishing, I was never seen at that ramp again. I stayed away from that ramp and started exploring other areas. And actually the first day of the next day of practice, and you can pull up this video, I went and worked on my Torquedo and my Crescent Kayak Sholey that I use. And I was getting, I just kept working on getting it faster and faster. And this is just me practicing, going back and forth. And I had someone film me that was there at the ramp. Another angler's dad was hanging out and you heard me yell 6.7 there. So I got it up to 6.7 with the proper weight distribution, the proper, um, you know, uh, like the height of the prop and the angle, the pitch of the prop and got up to 6.7 where I used to only get 6.2 out of my Sholey. So you can get it even faster if wow. you work on that weight distribution for any kayak, not just a, you know, a Crescent Sholey. And, um, you just got to like really take your time. It's hard, but like, don't fish, just sit there and okay. And ramp and, and test the speed and then go back and make an adjustment, test it again, you know, and keep yeah. doing it. And, uh, I've got that rock guard on there from innovative sportsman and the steering triangle. And I was working with all those components and making sure everything was tightened down. Cause I knew now I needed to go up that river and based on the rules, you got to float in and float out. So you can't, right. I knew I needed to make sure I could get up those shallow swift sections and uh, I needed every bit of speed I could. So the rest of the pre-fishing was spent going further up the river where I actually, I think on that first day, I went up three and a half miles from that ramp. Well, the next day I went and put in a, uh, you know, another private, uh, not private, another a public access that was maybe, I don't know, a few miles up. And I floated down to that 3.5 mile mark that I got up to. And then I went from there, I went upstream because I needed to make sure I could, you know, get through everything all the way. Yep. And so then the next day I went further up, you know, and then further up. So basically I was like at one point, 15 miles upstream, but uh, obviously I would never, and could never get that far in the tournament, but I borrowed a bunch of batteries. I think I had seven Torquedo batteries with me and uh, <laughs> it was a lot, but it was very strategic and how I like thought about this a long time in advance and borrowed, but I didn't have that many on the kayak at one time. Uh, but that's just how many I had with me since you can't get a full charge sometimes um, if you get them on too charge too late at night, you know, mm -hmm. so, but I wanted to make sure I had plenty of power, uh, for day two. So that's why I had seven and, uh, essentially just, man, guys, I just went up there and, and started in a large mouth slew and, um, caught, you know, 80 something inches kind of mid eighties. And then, uh, the large mouth was pretty good up there. Everything was over 16. And then I went to, um, like, a uh, up them up just up the main river where it's clear. The slough's kind of murky because the beavers yep. and stuff are in that slough and they murk up the water and it just stays a little bit, a little bit stained. And then uh, the clear water and, and some fish that I found way upstream, some big smallmouth. I kind of went and chased them in, in the afternoon every day. And I uh, was up, Robert Weicker. I see him on there. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, he, he does some crazy stuff too, I know. So he's got a, a surely fit for that too. And some, some of these AP stuff or whatever the, uh, the lands in Ohio, I think that's what they're called. But um, it was a crazy sort of just fun. Drew Gregory is just how I love to fish, man. Went up there and caught uh, the first day after. I'll share another video. Uh, I, I caught some big largemouth, you know, in that slough. And then I went further up. And at the end of the day, with 30 minutes left, I culled up with this 19 and a half inch uh, small area. You'll see it pop up right there. Clear water, just using a, a spinning rod, which is kind of rare for me. As you can see, it's just not much wind. It's super calm and just throwing that new Z-Man Gobius. So once she's on, I realize, okay, I'm still filming and uh, start loosening up my drag because it's deep and clear here in this pool. Just let her do her thing, you know. But I can teach you guys a couple things not to do in this clip. But uh, first of all, a couple things to do <laughs> would be loosen that drag up when you, you know, after you get that initial hook set, you can loosen it up a little bit more once you see that they're, yeah. pretty big because you don't want to you know have a fish break off or uh or obviously straighten your hook so i loosen them up i mean given that there's no structure around right if there's structure around i may not loosen that drag up because i want to you know be able to horse them out of stuff when i need to but i only got eight pound tests so 
what I'm doing a lot of times, you'll see me hold the, I like hold the spool. I like cup the spool. And then and yeah. when I don't want them to go towards something, I can actually like hold the spool and pull them back. You know what I mean? And then reel it up. So that's what I'm doing. But a, a minute, in a minute here, I'll fast forward. She gets by a log and this is something to not do. So I'll teach you something that I, I knew not to do this, but I did it anyway. I don't know why. Even th this happens to the best of us. You'll see elite series guys do this all the time. What I'm saying is grab the line. You shouldn't do that. I mean, it's, you're going to lose them more than, yeah. more than not. But basically right there, she's about to go under a log. You'll kind of see it right here where she, she just boiled. She's digging towards this big old tree trunk. That's about, you're about to see it right there. And I got her just barely over it right here. Ooh. And then I just started grabbing the line. Cause I was freaking out that she was going under it. Yep. And, uh, the goby just falls out right when I lift her or lift her in with the belly. Oh, my God, the Kobe. Oh, you can yeah. see it fall off the side of the boat. It. Yeah, watch. I'll, I'll show it again. Oh. Watch this. Got you. Oh, my God, the Kobe just fell out. Oh so it fell out right there, and then you can go over here and see. You know, she was a 19 and a half, and that got me up to 90 inches. Wow. So, 19 and a half on the Kobe. Let's go, BS. See, a lot of people don't realize, too, and I, I, I've learned this over the years. It's like big fish, they'll clamp down and they'll try to pull that bait back in in their crushers. But mm -hmm. sometimes they may be just so clamped down so hard that the hook's not even in them. Mm -hmm. And it's when you take that, you know, like you said, if you grab the line or if they get right. a chance to jump and they open their mouth, that's when your bait goes flying. Yeah. And I know a lot of people have seen that when they go like to, to if they catch them with a net, like I like to do. Right. You, you kind of, you might lean down and let a little tension off and that fish will come off of that bait and if you're lucky into your net, but yeah, if you're lucky, sometimes, yeah. but not always, but I mean, yeah, it's, so. it's, it's always a treat chasing those big fish. I shouldn't so, have. So yeah, to back up and that. explain a little bit, because a lot of the mm -hmm. folks that watch our channel, you know, they got into fishing or into kayak fishing over the last couple of years. And a lot of us per participate in our catch 22 at KBF, which is, yep. you know, we're yep. catching 22 fish yep. or I the knucklehead it. bass fishing series, which is a beginner. It's kind of mm -hmm. like the challenge series, right? So right. People fish the bank or the kayak. So, but what you had to do with the KB with the uh, bass master rules is there's, specific mm -hmm. launches that you had to go by yes and kbf a lot of times you could put in in approved areas but it's not just a very specific list so the reason that you had to have seven batteries is because you're only allowed to approve launch from approved ramps so mm -hmm. you wanted to get away from everybody and right be, you know way up away from them that's why you had to carry so many batteries and make such a big run. Yeah. So, and, and just so you know, the Torquedo has a proprietary battery. So it's only like 29 amp hours. And that's, that's why I have so many. It's not like I'm carrying, you know, five, four or five, a hundred amp hour batteries. You don't, if yeah. you, and I mean, in, in reality, if, if Torquedo either made one that was a hundred amp hour, I would need like two, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's not, it sounds ridiculous, but they're kind of smaller batteries. They're lightweight. So I mean, they're really cool batteries, but there's yeah. a reason why I have 135 12 volt for my XI3. Or if I'm doing like you are and I'm running mm -hmm. my new port, I've got that 36 volt 60 amp hour battery right. that's going to carry yeah. me all over the place. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> they, they've got a new battery coming out that's got more, you know, like, like amp, amp hours, but. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure all you guys have yeah. been asking for that for a minute too. So that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, exactly. And, but I mean, the, what it does being so light and, uh, well, here's the, yeah, you can pause that. We'll show that clip in a second. That's a good one. But what it, what's cool about it being so light and, you know, you can carry, you know, one or two or three, if you actually have to, that's normal, I guess, carrying one or two, but yeah. it tells you because it's their proprietary, they've got that data port. It actually is really good. It tells you all kinds of information on that, you know, uh, display. So it's kind of, kind of nice you can always like yeah. slow down and get more out of it and, and it it goes a long way i think jeff little said he's gone like 40 miles on one before but wow. it was at a slow speed yep. it wasn't like just just burning it well i knew in a tournament it's all about time and efficiency <laughs> so i'm go. like gunning it when i need to gun it get up there plus i gotta go up these riffles that are like steep inclines they're like yeah. on a on a slope like a san francisco street i mean they're just like it's what it feels like and you look at them and in practice see that's what i was doing i was learning like can i actually get up this stuff with yeah. my torpedo on high in proper paddle form which i can't do here because i get just stuff in the way but surrounded by yeah, hardware. yeah. <laughs> but if in understanding whitewater kayaking skills to be able to read the water to get up that's just you know from learning how to paddle and learning how to yeah. read water and you need all those things to do it and and it was just all the kind of like 
things I needed to happen for me to actually pull this off. And I barely did. I mean, barely beat Guillermo and uh, was it Bennett that was in uh, tied with him in yeah. third, but like barely, but I needed everything to like, just fall exactly in place for me. And it just, it just happened to. So, you know, it worked out, but um, day two right here, uh, I ended up catching the big bass of the tournament on the very first, uh, very first fish of the day for me. And this is my slough right ahead of me is the slough. That's not the river. That's the back cut slough. Yep. And um, this little foam pit right here to just off below my rod by that log is where I throw. You'll see. And I uh, ended up being a 22 inch large mouth, probably like six and a half pounds. So let's watch it here. What bait are you throwing there? Was that uh, a chatter chatterbait? Yep. Only chatterbait fish of the tournament for me. Wow. But it was the right one. With the new chatter spike. I love that chatter spike, yeah. Yeah. I love those glasses. I know you've had a million yeah. comments about them. It's like, are we going skiing today? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. No boarding. The size of this what, thing, dude. What a tank. Oh, that is a, yeah, that was yeah, a good one. That that yeah. angle doesn't even do her justice. This one probably does a little bit better justice on how big she was and how fat. Oh, that's a great way to start tournament. Morning on final day. Fastmaster oh. Tag Series Championship. I catch one of those. I don't care if I catch anything the rest of the day. Yeah. I'm exactly. good. Exactly. Absolutely what ready to tank. spawn. So giant. That was cool. Um but then from there, I went up and uh, I, I that was my slew. I did pretty good in on day one, and I, I missed three other bites in there. I caught one that was sixteen. I missed three others. Uh, you know, they all just have a different story. You know, it got it was in wood. One of them, it was spinner bait, got hooked and fighting me and brought brought me down into the wood. Next thing you know, I'm just stuck on wood and he's gone. So, you know, another one hit right at the boat and that murky water went. I go back in the slew and just swiped and just missed it and. I don't know, uh, but then it was scary because I had to go upstream and in that clear water with only two fish and trying to get three more, and it's yep. clear and the smallmouth are smart and it's not easy. They're not easy to catch, but it was cloudy, so I was able to actually pull out a big swim bait. When it's you know when it's cloudy, when it's clear like that, I should say, and the water's like fifty five degrees, it's it's a sketchy time for me because it's not the best power fishing you know situations. I mean, you yep. can if it was murky in fifty five, I'd be feeling much better you know what i mean or if it was 60 and clear i'd be feeling much better but it wasn't it was 55 ish and cold you know and clear and cold of course so that's that was a tricky combination for me to to crack with my style of fishing where i love to power fish big single hook baits you know yeah. so i used that z-man gobius on day one because remember it was a bluebird sky when i caught that first fish that mm -hmm. when the bait fell out thin line you know eight pound test braids it was super thin i just went straight braid and they were biting it in practice so i knew they would hit it again so then I, this next clip here, this, this final one will show is the 21 and a quarter inch Smalley that I caught after I caught that big largemouth, which gave me five fish. Oh, and I turned on the GoPro right when it bit. And I threw it right that log up ahead there. And, uh, you know, third cast with this new, you know, Zao Dangerous swim bait. I'd never thrown it in my life. There goes my paddle, by the way. Oh, yeah. Put it off and that was a mess. But thankfully I had a motor. But watch this jump here. Just absolute giant. I'll back it up if you guys want to see it again. It, it's like you feel your heart yes. in your throat every time they do yeah. that. It's like, yes. please, please. But I feel a lot better when I got them on a 30-pound braid and, the, you know, a yep. big hook. And I know that they're they're there and they're not getting off at that point. Especially now, when do you traditionally not fish with a net or you just lift them so no. long that's your habit? Yeah, I just like doing it that way. I don't really, yeah, I don't really fish with a net very often, but I should have on that. Uh, that's the other thing I could have taught you guys and should have said. Uh, I should have on the, um, the the Gobius fish, that spinning rod fish, because the spinning rod, you really, it, it really is smarter and safer. And it probably is with a bait caster too, maybe, but I've just lost just as many trying to net them and just, you know, and then you yeah. knock the bait off or the bait gets hung in your net or you're, you fumble if you, you know, fumble for your net when you're trying to get it or whatever. And, you know, I mean, there's a lot of, it's a, it, just, it happened to me at the KBFNC. I, I, I was in a new boat. It was my maiden voyage. And mm -hmm. I reached down to grab my net and grab my paddle because things weren't where they were in my previous boat. And I just, it wasn't second nature. And I was just right. So yeah, so it's, it can, it's pros and cons. I just like having is. the extra reach because I throw a chatterbait a lot, mm -hmm. you know, and I, if I'm going to lose a fish, it's jumping right in front of me just out right. of arm's reach. So, so it's, yeah. it's 50, 50, but I it just, is. 
Yeah, I hear I hear you. <laughs> Usually if you get one of those big single hooks, they're getting boat flipped in and they're not coming off most of the yeah. time. But I also have just done it so long. I, I'm and I all and I very I'm very big and, and you'll notice a lot of elite guys do this too. Uh you know, or MLF guys, they'll they'll look intensely to see how they're hooked to, to yeah. prepare on how they're gonna treat them. And let's say they're hooked, skin hooked. Well, dude, you gotta bring those in and just take it gentle and let them wear themselves out forever. You can't yeah try to horse them in, they're going to come off. So either way, net or no net, you still got to play in the same. The only difference is they get by the boat and yeah, you could probably, maybe you could get them, but that's also the time where if you miss them and they make a surge, the net is probably going to knock the bait out of their mouth if you miss. So I'm, I'd rather just bring them in gentle, slow and just belly them and just flip them in. Uh, you know, but those big single hooks are generally coming in anyway, or I can just lip them like I did that big, large mouth. And then the other thing for me, the other reason I, I tend to not like to do it. Two other things is, I just like to carry as little as possible in the kayak. You know what I mean? Right. I just, it, it's going to get up and get knocked off, get, you know, on the, that, on the sholey that I fish out of, it does have a spot that keeps the net kind of low and I, down, but I, the less I can carry the better for me, quite frankly. And then the last thing is just me being stupid in the sense that I love the bass fishing, you know, how it's been most of my life growing up with Bassmaster. It's always been, and Ray Scott did this on purpose. The challenge, like not using a net because that, that combat right by the boat with your hands and the fish is like the most dramatic suspenseful part of fishing. It really is. It's the, like for us when we're out there and watching the yeah. viewers. And I just love that. I think that's like exciting and challenging different ways. You have to grab them, belly lip them. And it just it creates some more drama. And I know it's, it's a jerk bait. And then you and the yeah, jerk bait and the fish are all connected forever. Yeah, exactly. Potentially. But it just, <laughs> It, it, I, know, I know everyone else can use a net in these tournaments and it's legal, but and I'm not live stream or whatever, so I don't need to create drama for a TV show. But yep. you get what I'm saying. Like it just to oh, yeah. me, I, I love that part of bass fishing. So I'm just like, I just like to do it that way. Oh yeah. So, anyway, and it, and it generally, I don't, I don't really know of many fish I can ever say that if I had a net, I would have caught it and then yep. instead of lost it. There are some may, that maybe you could, but obviously without having it that day how do you really know if you wouldn't have lost yeah, it you don't know but anyway that's um it's, that was a cool fish and then uh the uh see if i can now let me ask you this when you were hitting the slews were you expecting that to be more of a large mouth area versus like the smallies being in the river and then the large yeah. mouth kind of hanging out in the slough area i was you know large mouth kind of like slower water the slower yeah. pools the in the in the rivers or the um you know, the sloughs like this. So, you know, I kind of expected that to, to be the largemouth, and it was. And then the spotted bass, there are some spotted bass in there that were more in the main river, clear clear water, and then the smallmouth were there as well. Um, and then we can move on, but if you want to hear some pictures, I'll share my screen, and you can, oh, sure. if you want, show just some pictures of some other. I got more footage too, but um, I'll just share my entire screen with you guys. And I'll pull them up. Here we go. You guys see those pictures or not? There Probably. you go. There you go. So this is in pre-fishing when I found the fish. I found the big, like uh, the big largemouth were in that river. And uh, this little beaver dam kind of brush pile there was where I caught several nice ones in the tournament and practice. And I still need to go back and look and see. This is in practice, but I'm pretty sure I caught the same fish in the tournament. You can see I caught it on a spinnerbait, but in the tournament I threw a jig just to give them a different look. Yep. Even though I was there like four or five days prior, whatever it was. But uh, I want to give them a different look. And uh, and then I knew when I caught that many, this is the second day of pre-fishing. And uh, when I found the smallmouth on the main river further up, and it was like a 19 something. And that's that one large mouth getting caught on spinnerbait. So that was kind of some of my <laughs> GoPro. Yeah, it was a good shot. Yeah, I'll go back to it. Uh, but this is some of my GoPro um, stills from, you know, practice here. So I just want to show you guys some of those. And then that's, that's it. But then the, um, tournament itself i had like i've got the day one of just a few here if you guys want to see these but that was the same fish i just showed you i'm pretty sure it's the exact same fish this is the one, oh, I, this yeah. one I caught her during the same little piles right behind me i'm in the same spot and i threw a jig and uh just to be different and she bit it so and i caught two in a row right there i'm pretty sure same fish but um in practice she measured like a, a quarter inch shorter but i also wasn't like really trying to get everything out of her, you know? Yeah. So I think it was 1975. I'm pretty sure I'm going to go back and, and look, but that, cause I'm curious, but, um, large mouth are pretty homebody. So 
and it was four days prior. So she definitely had time to like reset for sure. Big time yeah. that many days. And then, um, so that is, that was that photo. The next one here is that big small mouth at 19 and a, and a half that we saw. And, uh, he says it all. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty pumped. And that's, uh, that might be that same 19 and from the front oh. and last one. And we'll, Oh, you guys probably love seeing photos though. So I don't know why I'm trying to, you know, rush through it, but we all, we all love visuals. That's that big, big oh, one yeah. I got on day two there. Uh, at the beginning, that's me measuring that small mouth. So I can move this. I thought you could move this thing out of the way. Yep. And, uh, that's when she was, you know, jumping right at the boat. So I just took some stills just to have, and that's what she kind of looks like when you get a kind of a better. What a context. gorgeous yeah. pick. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, that was fun. And then just, I put this one in here too, just cause like, look at the lips on this thing. I mean, that that's when, you know, you got a big small mouth and they look like a carp, you know, yeah. their lips are so thick and bony. So wow. that was, that was that one. And then that's the same fish from the other angle. So, and that's the jump. Look at that. That's cool. I love that photo. Yeah. Oh, perfect. To see the size of that thing coming out of the water. I thought I'd lost her. Cause I don't really throw line through swim baits a lot. Yeah. And you see the bait just dangling there. So I, yeah. I thought I'd, she threw the bait. But that was the log she came off of, and then it's that big one again. So there you go. That's your that uh, awesome. Now we're into inception here. Yeah. But uh, but it all worked out, man. I caught 90 and a half. I upgraded one more time after I caught the big small mouth and then had to sleep on not knowing I, I was in the lead by like three and a half inches over Guillermo, and I knew he had a great day on day one, obviously. And so was was hoping and praying that he didn't, you know, call up and he didn't and uh, when the line's out, you know, the, the one hour when they cut the leaderboard off. Yeah. So um, just blessed to, you know, take the title. And it was nerve wracking because I just didn't know because I had to sleep on that oh, yeah. 24 hours until we got on the Bassmaster Classic stage. And Steve Owens did a great job and Bassmaster as a whole. Yep. You know, they're doing a really, really good job with this kayak series. The, 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 the arena in Oklahoma was packed in Tulsa. I mean, like not not like packed, like every seat packed, but I mean, like it was pretty darn full for the kayak series awards i was like looking yeah, up i'm like cool. wow we're everywhere so uh it was cool to be on the stage and i actually edited that little that short minute video of that big you know big bass and it, they were able to put it on the screen behind me uh because i sent it to steve so it's pretty cool yep. that I got a little taste of the kayak adventure series basically exactly, yeah um right there in the in the uh it just makes it a better experience for everybody when you can see the fish catch and and so it's definitely something i'll never forget and just a, a cool, cool event. Can't wait to uh, get out in Texas next year and try I it know. again. We're definitely going to be down there for that one as fans. I, I keep telling myself mm -hmm. that's one of the things I want to do in life. Because, like, you know, we, we'd like to go do these things as, as fans and, and be a part of it. But as I was telling Jeremy, I said, I'm going to take this year and I'm going to have some fun and get to know my kayak. I said, but one of my goals in life is, you know, just – just to go and fish like all of the Bassmaster maybe and just try to qualify to go to, to, to fish that championship. You know, mm -hmm. for me, just being good enough to be there would be an awesome, amazing experience. Yeah. I mean, we, we went to the, the classic last year at Knoxville and it was fun to watch, you know, everybody and then turn around and watch Gussie win it after that. And then this year, watch you win. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, watch a young man change his life forever with his daughter on stage and, uh, you know, that, yeah, was, that, was, that cool. was, that was really cool as well. That but, was. uh, you know, we ended up going to Red Crest this year just cause it's a, a short drive and we'd never been yeah. to one of those. And, you know, of course, you know, you go see DC and Wheeler and them doing their thing, their men are shaking derb as they call it, you know, mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, it's cool because we're, we're fans of all of it, you know, all exactly. the bass fishing, you know, we watch me and all the freedom squad crew, we're in a, a derby chat all day long during all the tournaments while we're at work or they're on the water, whatever, you know, talking about mm -hmm. who's doing what, you know, and we're watching all of them because we're just, we're fans. Yeah. Fans of, of all, all of it. it. You know what I mean? Just, we just, yeah. I love the technology and the fact that we could follow all mm -hmm. of these guys around, however they're fishing and just watching yep. them, watching the best do what they do. It's fun. Yeah, so, absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, you've, you've, you've kind of hit the pinnacle of like many of the things. Is there any other, you know, other than your next adventure, obviously, <laughs> but do you have any yeah. other like big, big goals? Is there anything you haven't done to that? You, you still want to try to accomplish? I mean, on the personal tournament side, I mean, to not really, man. I mean, I'm not that, 
not that I'm not going to keep trying to like win more or whatever, but I don't really fish that I'm, you know, I'm putting on this, this kayak adventure series, which takes a lot of my time and the you know yeah. kids and dogs and wife and fa- all the family here. It's, it's a lot, you know, and putting on six of those is, is a lot um, for oh, yeah. sure. So I won't be able to fish a full schedule like I have in years past of personal events, which is really cool that I was able to win this because I'm only fishing, you know, like, five or six events this year. So it's not yeah. like a big full schedule. I not in the past, I've really typically only fished like 10 to 14. So yeah. not, not much different than what the elite series guys do or any, you know, those right. guys, they, most of them will fish there nine. And, and I get, I can't remember if that includes the classic. So maybe that's 10. If you include the classic, but they'll fish nine, uh, or there's nine opens for Bassmaster it mm. opens there. That's a typical schedule for major league fishing. I think it's about nine when you include red crest eight or nine or, or 10, so I was kind of fishing a typical schedule, but, uh, you know, a couple of years I did hit 13 or 14 events, but, um, just to, to kind of slow down and not fish as many, I'm just going to have less opportunities to win because you're, yeah. you're only fishing, you know, five, six tournaments for yourself. So I don't know now, what my, what my the winner, are, but... do you automatically qualify for the next one. I think so. I think I do. Oh, almost, that would be kind of cool yeah. too, because then you could focus on your adventure series and right. kind of do what you want. Exactly. <laughs> you defend so, the title. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm gonna go and fish Gunnersville for Bassmaster. I didn't fish a Murray or Possum Kingdom. I wanted to hit Murray, it just didn't like work out. Possum Kingdom was pretty far away, and I fished it before. I got fourth there when the Bassmaster, you know, champ kayak championship was there. I like that lake, but uh, last time I didn't do so good. I lost. I did. I just lost the big fish actually, but uh, several, and it was just such a long drive, so much expense. And with this kayak adventure series kind of in the works, I was like, you know, I need to like. Yeah sit back and I can still fish three of the five. That's the minimum for AOI. And, and I, you know, been blessed to when I won my AOI for Hobie right here, uh, this one and bass, I fished the minimum events for both of them and just yeah. happen to go on a little run. So I, I knew I could still, you know, hopefully qualify for the, the championship in 25. But like you said, I think I qualified now anyway. So, but I'll yeah. fish the other ones just free, you know, nothing yeah. to worry about. I'm already qualified, I think. <laughs> and, uh, just just go in and have fun because that's because honestly that's i'm working at the kayak adventure series so even though i'll be having fun with all you guys like i still am going to be a little stressed because of the how oh, much yeah. responsibility i've got going on with so many people yeah you know city you know managers and tourism departments and you know the theater manager that I, we're working with the theater where the awards are held and all the other sponsors that are there vendor booths and just all the technical stuff to put on the you know, with my, with the, the tournament director, I work with Amanda Brandon at real tournament management. Yep. I mean, all these people just con- it's going to be busy. So it's not going to be like some relaxing time. Yeah. So if you think about it, these tournaments, I'm going to go fish the, the rest of the Bassmaster series. So Gunnersville, Susquehanna and Caddo, Bistano will be a time for me just to go and just be a kid, just go have fun yeah, and fish with the boys and just my time yep. to kind of, and I'll hopefully put on a good time for everyone else at the kayak adventure series events. But I like what you said about, you're a fan of all of it. Cause I want to reiterate that I'm a fan of all of it too. I'm yeah. a fan of, you know, look at all the trophies and stuff behind me and all the, the series. I do love to fish. And I wish I had more time to fish yeah. more of all of them, you know, more KBF, more Hobie, more Bassmaster. Like I, I wish I could, but just busy with full-time other responsibilities, yep. you know, working, designing boats with Crescent as well. Um, you know, working on some other projects behind the scenes that aren't public yet. And the kayak adventure series is full-time enough. So uh, I wish I could, but I am a fan of all of them and we communicate well, we work together and I would love to see kayak fishing continue at the highest level, the directors working together um, and communicating really well and keeping it just like we got it now, you know, and yeah. because Steve Owens is even fishing there, you know, he even registered for this event. I think Chad Hoover said he's coming over yeah. to Ch- Charlie. I don't know if he's going to enter and fish it, but, or just come over and hang out. Uh, and AJ, we've invited him to sell. I'm sure maybe if it works out with this schedule, he might pop in. You never know. Yep. And that's awesome. Like we we're cool with that. And we, we've definitely not overlapped with the schedules this year. And yeah. not that we are really, I don't feel like we're, you know, super overlapping anyway, because we're very much a kind of a more laid back, you know, intermediate level sort of thing, so, you know, two man team division, which yeah. is just 75 bucks a person. So you could come and beat our event for 75 bucks or heck you could even enter the the micro bag the five smallest fish division that we have going yeah, on it could be the true for, deke master yeah, shootout for, you know? that's right for just 25 <laughs> bucks so you could be a yeah. part of our event for as little as 25 bucks if you wanted to or 75 if you want to be in on the team and then if you want to be obviously in the individual division that um it, at 150 anglers it pays out seven grand so yeah. it's it's you know 150 dollars a person 
So it's still a nice payday and we'll get some big names there, but they'll, um, but it's not really a big overlap with these other series. And we actually think if you look at our roster right now, we've probably got 40 something people signed up, uh, 45 individuals and probably 55 registrations or 60 between all the divisions, micro bag team, you know, the side pot Sunday event and the actual individual event. Um, we have a good, if you look at that roster, there's people from all over and a lot of names you've never seen fish, a Hobie KBF or Bassmaster. And that tells yeah. me it's working because I yeah. want to get them excited about, yeah, our series, of course, but I, I know that most people are only going to fish. There's only six. They're probably going to fish the two or three that's closest to them yeah. at max. So maybe they, for AOI, you got to fish two of the five regular season events and then our brood stock, our finale to yeah. adds to your two. So it makes a total score of three. So at most, most people might, I mean, some people might hit three, Somebody yeah. might, so a few people might hit four or five, like actually get more than that. But most people, it's going to be one or two. And those that fish that do well at two might go and fish the finale because they might be in the AOI hunt. Yeah. Um, so it's a cool thing that we can grow the sport. And then, of course, they're going to love that they're going to fall in love with these events and tournaments in general and say, yeah. well, what else can I go fish? And maybe they'll start here and work their way up towards those other series. So, and like you said, and, I follow and, and, all of it. Exactly. And that's like with KBF with the knucklehead bass fishing series, it's the same kind of thing. It's, it's getting them started and into it. And, you know, once you get the first season over with and everybody sees the videos, I think that's what one thing that the people mm -hmm. that didn't get to come to the championship, they realized after when they saw like all their favorite YouTubers and, and all these teams yeah. get together and all the pictures and, Oh my God, there's fluke master and Chad Hoover. And, yep. you know, that's really cool. And you guys are going to have the same experience too. After you have the first couple of events, you know, you, you start seeing the YouTube videos coming out going, Oh, this is a cool concept. And I don't have yep. to be a Guillermo or Christine or Russ Snyder's to go do this. We can no. go and have fun and you can yeah. compete against people on that level, but you can also compete against your buddies and with your buddies, you know, I'm sure me and Jeremy's going to team up for like a two man, whatever. And yeah, you know, makes it for, for bragging rights you know so i think after you have your first couple of events and especially the fact that you're taking the time and you're 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 fishing where people would want to go take a vacation to go fish mm -hmm. i have never been to susquehanna and anywhere up there but i mean after josh Schrenko from indiana goes up there and all of us smally talk fans are like that's one of our local indiana boys went up there and you know, and I know he's a fan of what you got going on. Oh yeah. And, and, and other people too. It's like, Oh, you know, this is, this is a, a fun, you literally named it correctly. An adventure yeah. series. And we tell people when, when we, the freedom squad travel around and go to these different places, we're not going to compete and beat Christine and Carol, Mo and Russ and Drew. We're going to fish yeah. and have fun in places we'd never otherwise right. would have gone but you That's get right. to hang out and meet, you know, yeah, it's like yeah. when you come to the boat show, you know, your fans yeah. going to come up and meet you in person. Mm -hmm. And That's then exactly you right. come and talk to everybody, you know, and it's really exactly. cool to be able to do that. Exactly. And that's where what's cool is you're going to be able to meet, you know, your, your YouTubers, your top pro anglers at a lot of these events, you know, you will be able to see, you know, Alex Rudd or John Dalton from Creek fishing adventures. And yep. you're going to see, you know, Russ and, and Jody queen and, you know, you look at the Jeff roster, Little. Jeff Little, <laughs> one of my, my favorite God, guys of all one of the, in the whole world. The yeah. best. Gene Jensen's coming to yeah. this first one. Um, a lot of good, talented anglers are going to be at these events um, that are, have big followings and are really, really studs. Robert Weicker was on here earlier. He yep. he might still be, you know, he's a hammer and he'll he'll be down fishing some of these. A lot of good anglers, but the and the cool thing is when they enter, you don't need to freak out and worry because the good news about the kayak adventure series format is it's just five fish over that day and a half yeah. that friday afternoon and saturday you know three to seven on friday and, and saturday your typical fishing tournament day you know till about three you know if that would have been 10 fish you'd be a little bit like nervous yeah. if i was an intermediate because that's like even yeah. harder but if it's just anybody you know, i think most people can get five over a day and a half of fishing you know I'm, yeah. especially because we have the, a 10 inch minimum not 12 so yeah I think most people are going to get five, but it, you might only catch 10 fish and, and Russ or someone who, you know, obviously is a hammer in the sport. One of the best, he might catch 50, but if you have the right five of those 10, the right size, yeah. if you happen to get it right, you can still potentially win these events or, or score really well. No one will know if you, how many total fish you caught. Obviously you just need to get five good ones yeah. and whether you catch six or seven, 
all day and a half or 55, it doesn't matter, but you have a better chance that it's five fish as opposed to 10. And that's yeah. one thing we did strategically. And we wanted to make sure people, if they couldn't make Friday afternoon session of fishing, they could make Saturday and it didn't matter because it's still just five fish. I mean, obviously yeah. you want those four hours, but someone's going to win this year without even fishing Friday or someone's going to win and, and cull all their fish from Friday to which pretty much makes <laughs> Friday irrelevant. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it'll help people, you know, especially the intermediate anglers who are learning about kayak fishing and making decisions when they realize they made a bad decision and went to the wrong place on Friday, they can fix it on Saturday. If you make a bad decision on a tournament day, that's it's 10 fish over two days that bad decision on day one is going to cause you to not get a limit or a super small limit. And you're never going to recover to win. And you probably can't recover to even catch a cash a check. But at these events, the way we structured it that way, you can, and we know it's easier for people to take off work on Friday than it is on Monday. Yeah. You know, Monday's the busiest work day of the week. <laughs> Friday, everyone's taking half days and full days. Like, oh, I'm just going to have kind of not feeling good today. So that's why we, we do the opening ceremonies on Thursday. We can party yeah. the night away Bass U Brunch is what we call it for our seminars that you can learn from Jeff Little and Gene Jensen and, uh, you know, all the, the fisheries biologists we bring in at the Sholey Palooza yep. at the first event and just hang out, have breakfast. You know, you get breakfast there. It's it's optional. You don't have to go there, but you can't get on the water that day until 2.30 for fishing. No yep. pre, pre-fishing allowed. So, that again, that's freeing you up to say on Thursday night, why do we need to go home? Why do we got to go back and do anything? Let's hang out and rub yeah. shoulders with these like guys you like you're talking about they're the big names in the sport some of the best anglers and you can learn a little bit and glean some information off of them by hanging out with them and just get to know them because they're all super friendly this everybody in this sport is as oh, you know 100%. so it, it's a good time to it lets you it frees us up to be able to have that fellowship and then the same thing on uh it also by the way gives us a day on the water that's a weekday where there's not pressure from the the public as much yeah so that's yeah. going to be pretty cool it gives us also an afternoon bite which is really cool because there's a good afternoon bite. And sometimes we miss that, you know, so it's a mm -hmm. new strategy that's going to kind of have to come into the tournament. And then Saturday, when you get back, just come back to our host town. we got a festival going on, food, music, drinks, games, Toyota truck demos, kayak demos, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. E-bikes, big announcement. Yeah. I'll, I'll announce it right here live. I've never said this anywhere. It just got figured out later earlier today. Uh, there's a, a company called Ubco, UBCO. They're an e-bike, but really they're a utility vehicle. Yeah, I'll pull them up here on our, uh, I'll share my screen and pull up oh, the, yeah. the website if you want. They're um yeah, hit hit my screen and I'll do it my uh, entire screen there. I'll just go to upco.com and you'll see the angler of the year is gonna win one of these bikes. Five thousand oh, wow. dollar, some are more, but bikes. So look at this two by two special edition. I mean, these things are sweet and uh um, <laughs> really cool. <laughs> the angler of the year is gonna get uh, like a package that's around like, ten, like around ten thousand dollars or more, and one of the things is this bike. So it actually might end up being a different model, but you get my—they're all look about the same. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. This is the adventure, so it might be like one like this, you know. But either way, yep. Yeah, it's pretty cool bike, man, and uh, <laughs> it's pretty exciting to have them on as a sponsor along with our other sponsors. All right, you can stop sharing the screen now. I'll go back to this. And uh, so that's that's a new announcement right here. Heard it. Heard it on, uh, you know, live. Heard here first. Here. There we yeah. go. Heard it here first. You guys are going to win. <laughs> the Angler of the Year will win. Pretty cool prize package. Um, and the Team of the Year will, too. We're kind of finalizing all that stuff now. Yeah. And a press release will go out Monday uh, more officially. But, yeah, I mean, after that, uh, the awards are in those cool historic theaters. So yeah. um, they're like, I don't know, I could – you can go to, I could share the screen or you can go to kayak adventure series.com if you guys want to check it out. But we're, our results are held in these cool historic theaters. So after the festival, we just go into some nice AC with food and drinks, yep. a real stage that's exciting for you guys to be on and get photos on. We're paying out the top 15%. So, like I said, that's pretty cool because, uh, you know, the top 15% will get a chance to walk, at least walk on the stage, get, you know, get their medal on stage and walk across the stage. So that's pretty cool. Get, get some, some of photos. the other things to highlight too is you guys mm -hmm. are making this very family friendly. There's activities for the kid, yeah. kids and family own. to do while people are out fishing, you know. So it's it's mm -hmm. it's a true festival and celebration. Yeah. Um, and it, one of the things I always tell people too is like you were talking about the five fish, you know, each day or whatever. The mm -hmm. other cool thing is you may not even care about that. You come home and catch your PB. 
oh yeah you know, small mouth or large mouth or spot wherever we happen to be that's yep. a memory that you have you know forever, forever because we had that happen, you know, last year when we went down to, to Gunnersville and people who had never been there before, whether yep. they don't care if they caught that 22 inch in practice, yes. <laughs> they, they went down there and caught a 22 inch bass, you know, that's right. And, and we're going so to the pools like that. Yep. That's the memories. I mean, and for 100%. Georgia, a shoal bass, you know, if you never caught a shoal yep. bass, Sholey Palooza is when you want to, you know, where you want to go. Cause that's a, a rare black bass species. It's um, if you want, I got the website up, you can share my screen if, if you want to hit it and uh, you'll see like, you know, that I can kind of manipulate it here to different things, but yeah, this is the like kayak demos that the you'll have. And then, um, you know, you can see our, our concept. There's our locations, which we'll go over in a minute, but that we're, these, are the theaters right here. So you can click on the events that's and so cool. for Georgia, you'll notice you got, um, this is your chance to catch that shoal bass. It's a rare black bass species and they don't get, if you don't know about them, they get big, like real big. They're like a, a small mouth and uh, you'll be able to fish all these rivers, this beautiful water. I mean, look at some of this water you're going to get to fish here, guys. I mean, the Flint river is just absolutely gorgeous. It's a beautiful shot that uh, Guillermo Gonzalez took of, of Craig Dye. I love that photo. It's, it's That's epic. There. In that new canoe is just, just cool, man. Um, yeah. And that river is just beautiful. All of the water and these shoal bass get, you know, really big. And I'll show you some pictures of some of them. And we got lakes and bounds too. So whatever your style is, whether it's a yeah. lake and electronics, you know, lake and electronics and motor, or you're more simple, or you just don't even have the, the funding to, to, you know, to do anything more than just being simple, right? It's kind of forced you to be simple. And, you know, you can get out and wade fish. You can stay tethered in our event. So yep. that would be le legal to portage over stuff if you don't feel safe and, and yeah, get so out. If you're a traditional paddle kayak guy, like our good friend OEF5, you know, he, he takes that RS-117 everywhere he goes and paddles away. He doesn't mm -hmm. care where it is. And this he'll love, you know, stuff like this, too. Love it. And then, you know, you, you can fish each of these fisheries in a kayak to your style, like he said. I mean, it's yep. it's going to be really cool. Yeah. If you've never caught a shoal bass, you got to do it. It's my wife with a five-pounder. I mean, it's Jeez. they're awesome fish. And they've caught them as long as 24 and a quarter. So, I'm telling you, they don't get – they're not small fish, man. They They get big. There's a big one there, the big bug eyes, but there's a 24 and a quarter when I was, you know, just a young whippersnapper there. But, um, and I caught two, I've caught two that are the same weight as this one, seven pounds, two ounces. So, and all the event information is here. You got a joint event with the Peach State Kayak Anglers, and we have a joint event with multiple clubs at some of oh, our yeah. stops. Um, you know, the Torquedo Individual Division, the X2 Power Two Man Team Division, the Z Man Micro Finesse Micro Bag, and the Crescent Kids. You'll win the, the youth. 16 and under is going to win a kayak from Crescent. That's so awesome. at every event. So if there's five or 10, doesn't matter. Youth's getting a kayak and um, batteries plus side pots that at extra tournament on Sunday, it's just six hours from when you check in on tourney X, but it's just, if you want more fishing, do it. If you want to go play golf with your buddies on Sunday, cause you're all there together, do it. If you want to just drive home, cause you got a long drive, go for it. But you can yeah. also take um, some, these ACA classes that were that Jeff little and Russ and, and Dustin Hoy are putting on, and uh, it, that'll be pretty cool, too. Hopefully you guys have heard about those. Speaking of that, I want you guys to think of something for me because I know you guys are very good. I've, I've, I've loved following Jeff's videos mm -hmm. where he's, you know, showing different people in, in his, you know, where he's hosting classes and stuff like that, too. And I know like you, Russ, Jeff, a lot of you teach these guys classes. Something yep. I want you to put in your mind one of these days. Guys like me, my brother, we have a lot of disabled veterans that we take out for recreation fishing. A mm -hmm. lot of times we stick to, especially with a lot of these guys, we stick to like ponds that are electric motor only so that there's not you know, a lot of waves and boats and other things to deal with. But one of the things I'd like you guys to focus on sometimes are folks with maybe varying disabilities who happen to get in a kayak, maybe some kind of uh, specific class for, yeah. for those that are with various disabilities to, you know, I, I know for a fact, like if, if I were to come out of my kayak and then and, and this happened to me at a, in fishing a tournament a couple of years ago, I got high stuck on a, a log. I thought I was in the channel. I wasn't. And I was out in a spot, no cell signal, nothing. You know, if, if I had to come out of that kayak to take that, to take, um, to take it off of the, the thing and then try to swim back to the bank to basically get back into the kayak. I don't know physically I could have, I could have managed that. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I got lucky and had a father son that was pre fishing for a tournament that happened to come by and see me, you know, waving and came out and helped me out. Mm -hmm. But I, I realized right then and there, I should have a plan and a strategy. Yep. 
lucky I was in an autopilot and, and it didn't dawn on me at the time. But if I had to do that, I could have dropped my motor back down, used my remote and drug mm -hmm. myself back over to the bank. But maybe get you experts together and think about your varying, you know, techniques to get back in using rope straps or whatever. Right. Maybe come up with like a little something. So, you know, those, those of us who may not think about that, yep. we have to think about that because it, that, that could be, you know, life or yep. That could be life or death, and we're trying to make this recreation therapy, not you know, have a stroke because you you know something <laughs> happened. You know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. Um, so, and man, you couldn't have said that better. It's very important. Those classes, I mean, they're we, we're the leading cause in deaths of all the paddle sports disciplines. You know, it's not whitewater, it's not recreation, it's kayak fishing, and that's because we don't know how to paddle. We don't know how to read water and understand things. We we should. We just focus more on the watching videos about tips and tactics on how to catch fish and lures and techniques and that kind of stuff. And really yep. I just explained to you how I won this tournament. It was all because I understood the, you know, the paddling and the reading the water and understanding all that, that kind of, and it's dude, it's helped me win so many events understanding yep. because that's also where the fish live. They want to yep. be out of the current. They don't want to sit in the swift current. So if you understand that stuff and so you can't catch fish if you're injured or, and it's not fun to lose a bunch of money in your stuff. And it's definitely, obviously worse, you know, it could be, you could die. So saving someone's yeah. life by, you know, us teaching those classes. So we'll have to put up the, uh, I'll share the graphic with you and uh, we'll have to put that up so people can, or just go on to kayak adventure series.com and you'll see, uh, yeah. uh, sorry, go to kayak adventure series, Instagram is the best thing to do and go find that graphic or the Facebook page. And it tells you how to you know, pay Jeff little it's 110 bucks. You get eight hours, you know, a whole day at a private yeah. lake. Like you said, private lake, it's it's actually stocks. So it's got a bunch of giants in it too. So you'll get some fishing tips and tricks and skills from Jeff Little, Dustin Hoy, Russ Snyders. I mean, three yeah. of the best in the industry. Um, and uh, you'll you'll definitely become a better angler. I'm going to teach some too on the Sundays after, but that's what the Sundays are for. It's And it's a, an easy travel day, less traffic on the roads. Yep. It's just cool that we're going to be able to kind of like start on Thursday with the opening and then the Friday afternoon session and the Saturday, the festival, the, you know, the awards and after party. It's, it's very, I think, set up for a lot of fun, man. I can't wait yeah. to see you there and see, you know, a bunch of you guys catching your first shoal bass, having and, a good and, time. And, and, and I want a lot of you that are watching this, keep in mind, you see a lot of fancy kayaks. You're going to see mine fully decked out, but I'm also building it to be a Creek boat where I could take all that same stuff oh. off and just paddle it. But I want you to keep mm -hmm. in mind, don't think you're ever at a disadvantage because you're in a, what I call, simple pedal kayak. Mm -hmm. If you know who Russ Snyders is, if you know who Drew Gregory is, if you know who Eric Jackson is, EJ, I don't think he has electronics on his boat, does he? He just, no, he has the paddle no, pole and gone. And so you can still go catch fish just doing your float. Yep. You can compete with anybody. And we see people do it. Year after year after your creek fishing adventures, John, he's got a pedal kayak, but he's still simple, a couple of rods. I mean, yep. he, he would still have a milk crate if he could get away with it. He is, you know, there's so many people that keep it bare bones and compete at the highest levels. And he just, yep. you know, I know John, he just goes and does it for fun, but he still smacks the fish, throwing his mm -hmm. orange sherbet yum dinger and a, a, a spinnerbait. And, you know, he just fishes and yep. you guys can do that too. But the, the key again, Drew named this again, perfectly kayak adventure series. So, I mean, man, yeah, I can't man. wait. I've, I've got to look at the schedule and pick at least one or two. Cause I told you I was going to, um, yep. and, and I'm still dedicated to doing that. I'm going to make at least one of them this year, no matter what. Um, yeah, man, it's, you gotta just, get out I there. I haven't fun. been able to decide which one yet. <laughs> um, if you want to share the screen one last time, I will show you yeah. guys. So this is, uh, you know, go and you'll see. Uh, this is pretty darn good for kayak anglers, guys. We have, like I said, this is all 39 people who are already registered. And just so, again, you get a $100 gift bag from the sponsors if you sign up and you're one of the first 100. And, you know, we're procrastinators, very big procrastinators. So that's why I wanted to give an incentive for you guys to sign up. And if we don't sign up soon enough, maybe we'll make that the first 50. Maybe that'll <laughs> for the next events and that'll speed yeah. it up a little bit. But we want to get people, but you can register all the way up to the opening ceremonies on that Thursday. You might pay a little bit more uh, and not get a gift bag. You might risk losing that. But we got people from every state here, Illinois, Ohio, Georgia, Texas, you know, um, Alabama, more Alabama, Georgia's, of course, you got plenty of them, Tennessee, 
Virginia, another more Texas again, Missouri. Uh, you know, we got West Virginia, Tim Isaacs there. You know, it's just going to be a fun time. South Carolina, Florida, oh, yeah. more Florida, Tennessee with Steve Owens there again. Tim Perkins over there, Alabama. He's going to run it back with Lance Cooley. Uh, they were the one of the best teams of the uh, River Bassin Tournament Trail used to put in. You know, Ryan Rice there from uh, RJ, RJM, yeah, RJM yep. yep, from South Carolina. Yep. Pennsylvania, I mean, just North Carolina, just state like this is going to be a lot of fun having people from all over, kind of create these these friendships and um, yeah, you know, maybe even the fr- their families kind of get to know each other and like you said, there's there's activities for the families to do so. It's pretty cool to see that many people already signed up and we're still more than two weeks out. Or actually, yeah. probably two weeks exactly from today okay. is when is when uh, the opening ceremonies is. So that'd be the last day to sign up. Yeah. So I appreciate you guys. Doing that and and hey man we got GoPro and like the Toyota uh, bonus bucks program and 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 the Toyota dealers bringing the trucks for demos I'm saying like big non endemics we can keep growing this thing and get it even bigger and cooler and, and we, the way we've got it set up with lakes and rivers and bounds you could have 500 people in these things and, and oh, not yeah. and still not feel crowded because yep. you could fish lakes fish rivers all within about an hour you know is how we do it so it's a pretty cool little concept uh, and hopefully it are takes you, off and people love needs it. Of like our little freedom squad reunions and get people out there and, and hitting yeah. them up too. So, yep. Yeah. Yep. hundred percent. We've got the stickers in today. So we'll, Oh yeah. Get some of those. <laughs> That'd be cool. So making moves, man. I'm excited, but uh, yeah, I don't know if you yeah. want to go anywhere else. If there's any questions uh, over there in the comments, I'm not sure, but. No, they've just been yep. enjoying and following along. Good. So yeah, that's really awesome. And I don't want to keep you too long either. And I, I honestly, I got a whole bunch of stuff in for the Same kayak here. that I'm, I, I haven't been on the water like, but I've caught yep. five fish out of my new kayak this year. <laughs> and it's, I got home from the NC and it's been like, okay, I need to order this. And I, you know, brand new kayak, you know how it is. I got to look at it, figure it out. How do I want to do what, what, what? It's just, uh, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get it done and get back on the water. That's for sure. I jerry-rigged nice. it enough to go down to yeah. Gunnersville. And then I was too exhausted from all of that to actually fish. But you it's know? not like I wasn't going to go because it's Gunnersville. You know? Yeah, gotta, exactly. Gotta it go. looked like a good time. Dude. I wish I, I wish I could have squeezed that one in. That I, I am going to fish Gunnersville for Bassmaster coming up, so yeah. it would have been nice. But uh, I wish I would have had time. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll see you guys there. You're in actually Indiana, obviously. So yep. anywhere in the, the middle of the country there is actually really good for this KAS because we had to kind of put one in every kind of region, you know. So you guys are sort of like in the center, you know, in a yeah. way. Like you know, you're not going too far to Michigan, you're not going too far to Wisconsin. You know, I'm not I mean, it's still far for some people, maybe, but for yep. me, I'm like anything that's under 10 hours is like that's nothing you know, <laughs> because it's, you know, and, and we're obviously taking you guys to the best places. Like yes. there's a reason we're going to these six places. These are the first six we chose, you know, Poplar Bluff, Missouri is not far from Indiana. It's on the South East corner in Bowling Green, T- Kentucky for the finale. And the Susquehanna yep. river is obviously always worth the drive, you know, and then Georgia for Shirley Palooza. If you're in that middle of the country, that Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, yep. you know, anywhere in there, you, you know, Illinois, you're actually in one of the best spots to fish this series and never have to go yes. too far. You can get to like three of them without doing some crazy, long, expensive 20 hour drive, you know, which is again, yeah, it's not like the poor guys from Jersey driving yeah. to Possum Kingdom. We, we're, yeah. we're pretty much close to a lot of great fisheries. That's yeah, sure. you guys are. So that's it's yeah. nice. So hopefully we'll see a bunch of folks from those states there and uh you know it's, it's where i live too these days in northeast ohio I've been here for three years and yep enjoying enjoying living up here so yeah, yeah man. i'm gonna get up there and fish with our friends wendell fishing and you, there's a bunch of good guys sean boggs from miller tech is yep. up there by up there in that direction so yeah yeah there's a lot of folks around too so yeah looking forward to it well yeah, i'm not gonna man. keep you any longer again All right, thanks buddy champ congratulations thanks yeah. for coming on tell us about it and honestly i'm i'm so I'm so excited. I mean, I still love my KBF knucklehead and, oh, yeah. and what you guys are doing with the kayak adventure series is right along that same lines that I love, love, love getting these new yes. anglers into this too. So you can sign up and do all do both simultaneously. Yeah. Like Chad's got a lot of good online stuff at KBF. Yeah. So go get involved in that, the river series and small mouth stuff he's got going on. Like oh, fish yeah. that fish that while you're fishing this. And he, we, he and I have talked about that. It's a great yep. synergy there. We're just working well together. We want to keep it like that because we don't we don't ever want to get to what it looks like on the pro boat side with the MLF exactly. and bass. Which, and them. It's just I'm it's tired like... of tired of it all with the fans and everybody. Let's just keep kayak fishing 
like yes. this. It's better for 100%. all of us. And, and if more people sign up for any one of those series, trust me, that means the other series are going to be doing better too. You know, it, yeah. it really will. It'll rise everybody. So rising tides bring us all yep. up hundred percent. Yeah, buddy. Drew, appreciate Thanks, you tonight. Thanks for hey, hopping in with us. We appreciate it. Everybody watching, thanks for joining us. As always, get outside when you can and make some memories, one cast at a time.